Jonathan Pollard, non-compete and trade secrets attorney in downtown Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And I'm going to talk today about non-compete cases, of course, because that is what I always talk about, but specifically about declaratory judgments. I think that declaratory judgments are an underutilized tool when it comes to resolving non-compete disputes. And I'm going to give a few examples of situations in which I think a declaratory judgment can prove particularly useful and effective. So let's just start with the basics regarding non-compete agreements as most people are familiar with these. Employment contract contains a restrictive covenant. Non-compete agreement, non-solicitation agreement. Generally, you cannot compete with the company for a set number of years in a certain geographic territory. You cannot solicit their clients. Same thing, set number of years, certain geographic territory. Sometimes there are situations in which on the contract as written, you can narrow the scope of the non-compete agreement or you can narrow the scope of the dispute. And often talking about these legal principles in the abstract is not particularly useful and it's much more effective to use hypotheticals. So let's do the first hypothetical, declaratory judgment, non-compete situation. This hypothetical is going to be the geographic scope hypothetical. John works for a company called ABC Co. He sells medical equipment for ABC Co. John's territory is the entire southeastern United States. Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Alabama, Mississippi, Kentucky, Virginia. Big territory. John is a major producer for ABC Co. Things go south. He gets an offer from a competing company. The problem is John has a non-compete agreement. So the rival company, let's call them Rival Medical, Rival looks at John's contract and they say, all right, maybe there's a way that we can minimize our risk or at least narrow the scope of this dispute. John's contract is written as follows. It says John will not compete in the restricted territory. It defines the restricted territory by reference to a radius. It says John will not compete with the company in a 400 mile radius around any office to which he was assigned during the term of his employment. Well, as it turns out, when John originally started with ABC Medical Co., he was tentatively assigned to the Jacksonville office, but he never actually reported to work there. Some things went down, he was shuffled around. John wound up being formally assigned to the Miami office. So for the past several years during his employment with ABC Medical Co., John has worked in the Miami office. Even though his original tentative assignment was Jacksonville, he worked and was formally assigned to the Miami office. Why is this so significant? Well, we're talking about radius. You get on a map and you plot that radius. A 400 mile radius around Miami, the restricted territory is only going to be most of the state of Florida, but nearly all the state of Florida, except for some portions of the Panhandle. But the rest of that territory falls in the Atlantic Ocean, the Gulf of Mexico, and Cuba. So if the contract can be construed if it's written that way and it can reasonably be construed as only restricting him from competing in that 400 mile radius around his assigned office and his assigned office was Miami, then technically in my view, John is only restricted from competing. His non-compete is only effective in that territory, which is the state of Florida. Now, John could go work for Rival, Rival Medical, and they could assign him the Southeast. Let's say the Southeast is a particularly important region. There are certain big time players, big time clients in Atlanta and, and Charlotte and Raleigh Durham and Richmond. Let's say the Southeast is just huge and they've got to go after these clients, particularly ones in Charlotte and Atlanta. Well, 
if the non-compete is construed differently and the 400 mile radius is based not around the Miami office where he was actually assigned, but around the Jacksonville office where he was tentatively assigned at the beginning of his employment, that cuts off a much larger swath of the Southeast. Instead of just taking Florida out of the equation, that takes out Florida, South Carolina, parts of Georgia, up into North Carolina. It takes out a much more significant chunk of that Southeast territory. And if that's the way it goes down, it's really not going to be nearly as attractive for rivals to assign John to the Southeast territory. And John's the guy. John has been selling medical equipment in the Southeast for several years. He knows all the players. He has all these relationships. He understands the game. He knows it's a, it's a people business. And he's got the skills. He's got the connections. And he can monetize this for Rivals Medical. But he's got to be able to go in and to sell at those major clients in Charlotte and Atlanta. And if the 400 mile radius is drawn off of Jacksonville, that dramatically alters the game. So what is John's play? What is Rivals' play in this situation? Declaratory judgment. File a lawsuit for a declaratory judgment. And what you are seeking is, you are seeking a court order holding that the geographic scope of the non-compete agreement as written in the agreement is the 400 mile radius around his official assigned office, which was Miami, Therefore, the restricted territory is only the state of Florida minus the panhandle. Now, it gets even better because say John goes over to rival medical and he begins working there. And ABC Co. sends John and rivals a cease and desist letter. They say, John, you had a non-compete agreement. The restricted territory is drawn off of Jacksonville because that was your original assigned location. Even though you didn't work there, you were assigned there. You, uh, you were not allowed to compete with us in this vast portion of the Southeast. We have information that you are selling in Atlanta and Charlotte to some of our big customers. We are going to sue you for breaching your non-compete agreement. Not only that, we're going to sue rival for tortious interference and unfair competition. If ABC Co. makes that initial threat and puts the matter at issue, there is a very good body of case law holding that ABC is now on the hook for all the fees and costs of any litigation that is necessary to sort this mess out. And that includes your filing of a declaratory judgment action. So while you will have to pursue the action you have to invest time, you'll have to invest money in that, and there are no guarantees as to the outcome. If the contract is written as we've discussed, and if you do have a strong case on the law, black and white, that the non-compete is not enforceable to keep him out of that bigger region, but instead is just limited to essentially the state of Florida, if you have a strong case and you think you can prevail, now you have a ton of upside here. One, you can sue them first. Maybe they counterclaim against you, against John, and against Rival for uh, breaching the non-compete agreement and tortious interference and unfair competition or whatever else. But, but now, you filed the lawsuit. You're the plaintiff. You're in the driver's seat. You picked the forum, hopefully, uh, where the case is going to be litigated. You've got a bit of an upper hand here. And the process for declaratory judgment is often far more truncated and abbreviated than a full-blown lawsuit on the merits. And at the end of the day, if you prevail, you may have the opportunity to recover the fees and costs of the litigation. This is why I consider declaratory judgment actions an underutilized tool in non-compete litigation. Now, obviously, this is not always the case, but one thing that practicing law in this space for a little while has taught me is that there are so many non-compete agreements out there in the market today. They are widely utilized, they are ubiquitous, everybody has one, and they jam a lot of people up. And 
you would be surprised how many situations in which a declaratory judgment action may in fact prove the most effective means of resolving your dispute. Again, Jonathan Pollard, non-compete and trade secrets attorney in downtown Fort Lauderdale, Florida. If you have a question about a non-compete case, if you have a question about anything remotely related to a non-compete dispute, non-compete contract, a trade secret dispute, if you want to call and just talk it out and figure out what your options are, get an idea of what tools you might have available at your disposal, please, I urge you, feel free to give me a call. If I'm not in my office, please leave a message with me or with my secretary. I will get back to you because this is what I do and I love what I do. And I love helping people resolve these types of disputes. Give me a call, we'll talk it out, and we'll figure out if there's a way that I can help you sort out your situation. Jonathan Pollard, non-compete and trade secrets attorney in downtown Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.